my name's Robert Dyer, and uh, I'm representing myself, my family, and I'm very much in favor of this bill. I'm sorry. This is that. This impacts our family uh, very, very much, and <coughs> I guess to begin with, uh, in August of 2013. My wife and I got the uh, most dreaded phone call any parent can ever receive. Uh, our son had been arrested by the Mesquite Police Department. I'll probably go over my two minutes. No, we don't <laughs> have time. I, Trust me, you, you've been sitting here all day. There's no yeah, timer. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure you wish there in, was. In essence, he, our son was in, in hospital in, in Dallas. Uh, in custody of the Mesquite Police Department, and we, and this is three o'clock in the morning, and we woke up, and rushed down to the hospital, and a uh, uh, lady met us at the emergency room and uh, told us that Graham, was very gravely in, injured, and uh, but he was still under arrest and that we we couldn't go see him we got up on the fourth floor where the ICU is and there were several police officers there and our son is in the ICU with a traumatic brain injury that he sustained during this arrest uh, and one of the police officers said that he was in serious trouble for assaulting a police officer. He had bitten an officer. And uh, so he was still under arrest. We couldn't go see him. So we, you know, I was like, what the hell? Ha what happened? Um, he had done LSD. And had a bad trip or something. I don't know what. But he was running around crazy. And his friends were trying to get him to you know, calm down, Graham, calm down. And then the police got involved. And then, uh, I don't know, they tasered him a couple times, got him in the car, and then he was banging his head around. And uh, there are five police officers there two EMTs, and there's a 110-pound boy, 18-year-old boy here that's obviously in extreme duress, and, you know, he needed some kind of care of some sort. And, uh, well, they cleared him, I guess, to, to be arrested and not to go to the hospital, even though he had sustained... A, a head injury there at the scene. While they were taking him to the police station, he was going nuts in the car, and and they stopped the car and uh, tasered him numerous times. Again, uh, one of the police officers even said, I'm going to kill you, mother, or something or another. And they take him and uh, put him in a, I don't know, a little holding cell of some sort. And, and he became unresponsive. And this was like at 11 o'clock when the arrest. At 1 o'clock, he was completely unresponsive, and they took him to the hospital. They called us at 3, and when we got there, like I said, they wouldn't let us even go in and see him. When there was no more brain activity, they all left, and we were allowed to go in. And see our son. The police
police told us, you know, how serious, you know, he was facing bad charges for assault and the police, and I, you know, uh, and then they said, well, you know, you know, he had done all this stuff to himself. Well, okay, you know, what? And they said, come down and we'll all explain all this later and then after the funeral and everything. I just, you know, okay, I, now I want to know what happened to my son. You know, if it was like they said it was, well, then that's the way it is. I had no idea. And so, uh, we did not want to, you know, if you got all this bad video, I may or may not want to see it. I want somebody else to see it. I'm too emotionally attached to it. And so we had a, a lawyer request, what information do y'all have concerning Graham's death? And they just clamped up on us. And they, uh, because of uh, the uh, Section 552-108, the clause that says uh, if uh, a person, if it's not gone to uh, uh, adjudication or, or result in a conviction, they don't have to release records. And it just, uh, uh, it, it floored me, honestly. You know, uh, if somebody dies in police custody, I should think this is when we'd want to open all of our records. You know, did he do something wrong? Yes, he did. Uh, he was, I, I guess, would have been arrested for uh, public intoxication or something. And then to, to wind up. And it took us well over two years. We had to go through lots of steps. We, uh, <coughs> we petitioned the FBI to investigate this, and they investigated or, you know, and then they, they said there was nothing that they could do. And so later on, we, under the Freedom of Information Act, the federal, we filed a request and we got all the videos and everything that they had collected. And guys, I've only seen five or ten seconds, maybe of a two-hour ordeal that my son went through. And as a parent, even if it was not my child, if it was some other child and I saw what had taken place, I'd have been horrified. And I feel like, you know, the when they first rolled up on this scene, it could have been easily taken care of in one minute. They could have st strapped him down to a gurney, taken him to a hospital, and then, then arrested him. And, 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 you know, let him do whatever time. <laughs> but uh, that they just, to take a handcuffed person in a squad car and hold a taser to his inner thigh, uh, real close to the groin area, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and saying they did this to calm him down, I just can't see that. And then when they got to the police station, uh, they just like flopped him out on the concrete floor, and, you know, and he was in, you know, not in any condition that I should think a person should be if they're arrested. You know, when this first happened, 
first thought in my mind was, let me see the mug shot. Let me see what condition he was in when, when they booked him into jail and, and you know, and all this was, was, was withheld from us. And long story short, it took us nearly two years to through going through the FBI and, and filing a Freedom of Information Act to finally get uh, these two hours worth of videotapes and, and records of what took place. Um, later on, the district attorney in, in Dallas said that, yes, had they known about this, they, they might have possibly pursued some kind of charges against the officers for like negligent homicide or something like that. And I wanna, I wanna read from the government code. <laughs> government code, chapter 552, public information, policy and construction. Under the fundamental philosophy of the American constitutional form of representative government that adheres to the principle that the government is the servant of the people and not the master of the people, it is the policy of this state that each person is entitled, unless express, expressly uh, provided by law, at all times to complete information about the affairs of government and the official acts of public officials and employees. The people in delegating authority do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know. The people insist on remaining informed so that they may retain control over the instruments that they have created. It goes on further. The provisions of this chapter shall be liberally construed to implement this policy. This chapter shall be liberally construed in favor of granting a request for information. That's all we wanted from the get-go. Uh, you know, and in times, I can understand if there are actively uh, investigating sometimes you just don't have to release everything you know I can understand that but in in an instance such as this where a person dies in the hands if not at the hands of the police then all of this should be wide open to prevent anything like this from ever happening again if we make a mistake, let's air it out and correct that mistake. So something like that. And should this law be passed, um, I think that it would strengthen the police community. It would foster very, very good relation relationships between the public and the police officers that, that we hire to protect ourselves, you know. Um, and in closing, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I, we sat here <laughs> all day long. Uh, you know, this is what we do as American citizens. You know, we, we make laws. The laws may not always be perfect, you know, but we can tweak those laws. And if we pass a law that just didn't, you know, we can change those laws. I think this is one instance, one little clause that, that could be changed and would have very, very uh, lasting impacts. Uh, you know, I would hate to see uh, any other family go with what we've gone through. We've lived with this every single day since. Uh, August 14th, 2013. And thank you guys for letting, letting us speak.